This program is paid for by Innovative Medical Associates. All opinions or statements expressed on the program are solely those of Innovative Medical Associates or their guests and do not reflect the opinions of WPHT or Odyssey. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT, WPHT HD, WOGL HD3, Philadelphia. Now, Health Watch. Featuring Dr. Molly Fantasia, the PhD doctor and founder of Innovative Medical Associates, with valuable information that could help you improve your quality of life. Now, Health Watch. Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Health Watch right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. We are here every Sunday discussing a variety of issues with you, all of it, of course, designed to help you and your family improve your quality of life. Dr. Molly Fantasia is here, as you heard the man say, the PhD doctor, the executive director, and the founder of Innovative Medical Associates located in Marlton, New Jersey. And I'm John DeMassey. Nice to have you with us. And we'll talk about, I mean, we got a bunch of stuff to talk about today. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're covering the globe, you as know, they say. You know what I want to start with, John? You sound so much stronger. Yes. Well, okay. I feel better. God Thanks bless. Thanks to you. Well, Th- thanks to and, you. And the good Lord. And the good Lord. <laughs> wasn't for you. I, I don't know where I'd be. You well, know, but... <laughs> you'd be in heaven, but let's not go there, man. <laughs> okay. I love you, John. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get started with sure. just an idea of why innovative medical is different from anything that people have come to sure. expect. Sure. Our overview is important because every week I get calls saying, what the heck do you do over there? <laughs> so let's let's start with saying that we are a group, a collective of like-minded healthcare providers who actually work out of my facility, which is a primary care facility, and we can do everything that any other primary facility can do. We can we can write for antibiotic. We can write for high blood pressure medications. We can send you out for labs. Actually, we can draw the labs right there. We can also send you out for the radiology, whatever. But it is our philosophy that really makes the difference about how we approach patient care. Our philosophy is that we want to use the least amount of pharmaceutical necessary to keep the patient safe and to help correct their primary problem, whatever that is, whatever the challenge is. And we're able to do this by using hydration as a vehicle to use natural substances, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, God-given things that can work synergistically with the medication or possibly help correct some of the challenge Um, without any medication. So the point is that it's the use of the natural substances like you might get at a health food store, et cetera. And and now you're pretty much can get them at the, at the pharmacies. Okay. (laughs) But the question is using those things to help a patient improve their quality of life. And why hydration? Hydration is the quickest way to deliver these particular products. And also, by the way, you'll notice that hydration in and of itself as a modality is a quick way to deliver pharmaceuticals as well. And we have delivered some pharmaceuticals that way in conjunction with um, the nutraceuticals that we use. So it's just a quicker way, a more direct way. You bypass the digestive tract and you're able to get to a therapeutic level in a much safer and faster way. I guess it's the best of both worlds. Well, we try to be. Because you have the natural and then you have, you can write prescriptions. Of course, our doctors doctors can do that. As you know, we have two medical directors and we have registered nurses. And what we like to do is we like to look at each individual patient and utilize these hydration protocols in a way that works for them. Do people believe in... No. 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 (laughs) Do people believe, but I tell you, you can't not believe after you come in and see some of the results. Do I have data? Sure I do. But what's the most important thing? Come in and talk to the patients. Come in and see where a patient was. You're a great example of that, John. Listen. Because, I, I mean, everything that I've had has been a mild, mild case. Thank God. 
But in addition to that, it's recovery. Look at your recovery. Much quicker than you would think. And so the idea is, of course, you need to use, certainly we want you to use your physical therapy, your occupational therapy. We want you to keep control of your blood sugar. Very important. (laughs) So if you need medication, we're going to help you get that. You know that. We write for them, meaning the good doctor can write that. He can order what you need. But... We believe that it's the natural substances that have helped you turn the corner. By the way, the speech therapist dismissed me after two sessions. I know that. I know that. <laughs> so and I, I, mean, I was doing well. It took us longer to get the speech took, therapist than she worked with you. And she said to me, if I didn't know you had a stroke, I wouldn't know you had a stroke. I know. I know. And I thank God every day you're still getting prayers in that, in that regard. But that just goes to show you when we talk about belief that it does work it and, does. and it can work for people and they just got to give it some, some time, time. Yeah. and and the other thing john you hear me say it every week it's not holy water you're not going to walk in go through the miracle <laughs> spring water and come out on the other side yeah. right no it takes time there are processes in place and protocols and again our protocols are made the hydration protocols are made specifically for particular patients it's not one size fits all we're not a spa and um you know we are fully fully functional as a medical facility but utilizing the hydration and the natural substances to augment whatever is needed how many treatments can people realistically expect to have before they see results well certainly at least 10 and possi- possibly we see some results depending on what they come in for as early as five treatments but a course of treatment for example in terms of cardiac or stroke those kinds of things you're going to need 30 treatments to really see what's happening and that's why the commitment is not just from the doctor and from the facility and from my people but it's also from the patient the patient is an active participant in his or her care and do you vary the treatment? Oh, sure, with, sure. With regards to, I mean, Tom. everybody's different. Sure, Every, everybody. Sure. You think your protocol for post-stroke is the same as no. somebody who's no. got some cancer? Heck no, no. Um, or or fibromyalgia. There are some some markers that are the same. Don't misunderstand me. We may still be going after the devil, inflammation. Yes, but. There are additional nutraceuticals that we would use, for example, to improve brain function. That may be an amino acid. So, again, it's all going to vary depending on what the patient has, where the patient is in their continuum of care, and what is it that we're going after and how do we help a patient improve their quality of life. What condition would you say works best with your treatment? Or is that that too hard of a question? That's a really difficult question because I think a lot of that depends on when a patient comes in. But I can tell you the conditions that we've seen more often. You know, we cut our teeth on cardiac yes, and, and vascular conditions. So that's one that we know. And there have been a lot of changes in 26 years with with cardiac. You know, back in the day, they were doing many more bypass surgeries than today. Yeah. Right? We never heard of stents back then. Correct. <laughs> Correct. So. Now, very few. Very yeah. few. They were there, but they were very few and far between. But today, we know that that's all changed. And the same thing is true. Medicine is forever evolving. And I think we have to thank science for that you have to thank people who have a science background for that because there are so many new developments on the forefront that help physicians actually go after more variables that contribute to a patient's condition when people tell you their experiences what do they say how long does it take for them to really see results Uh, mostly like i say between five and ten they start to see some changes And again, I'm going to say, John, we are not curing you. We're not curing you. You know, I believe only God can cure. But I can tell you that we can improve your quality of life. And with that, we are coming up on our first break of the morning. It's Health Watch, Sundays, 8 till 9, here on Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. 855-839-1210 is our number here in the studio. We always tell you, call early so we can make sure we get your call. We have time to talk to you. 855-839-1210, 855 
839-1210 is our number here in the studio. I'm John DeMassey with Dr. Molly Fantasia, the Ph.D. doctor, executive director, and founder of Innovative Medical Associates. We will have more Health Watch after these words. And we are back here on Health Watch. Operators are standing by right now at Innovative Medical Associates and their number, 856 489 0505. I'll say that again. 856 489 0505. Call them up. Make an appointment to sit down with Dr. Molly and go over whatever you need to go over. The initial consultation is complimentary, so it doesn't cost you anything. Take advantage of it. And if you want to check out the website, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com is the website. It's Health Watch Sundays, 8 till 9, Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. We're going to go to the phones right now. Jackie is in Taconi. Jackie, you're on with Dr. Molly. Hey, Jackie. How are you? <coughs> Hello, guys. It's good hey. to hear John. Yeah. I love hearing John. Oh, and thank you. And I wanted you. to just thank Dr. Molly for what she has done to my, for my husband, Tim. It's amazing. Oh how far he has come i'm going to cry probably don't <laughs> cry don't cry <laughs> I, we don't have anything in the black bag for crying Kat. you hear me <laughs> okay. but he's come so far it's amazing he was so yeah. sick molly and we started I with know. you and I been know. with you and you've done the miracle cure for him or what all your magical bags and things <laughs> but we followed your steps and I thank just God. want to thank you so much and thank my family. You. And now he's a grandpa. So oh, that's yeah. right. All a right. brand new a brand new little by the way, his DNA is pretty strong on that baby, I gotta <laughs> tell you, seeing that picture. And you know, Jackie, that's actually very interesting that you called today, and I'm really glad you did because I want to talk about something I had spoken briefly about to Tim in terms of running a particular uh panel for him next week. And it's uh, one of these things because I'm seeing more and more people with post-COVID who tend to have higher lipids and are at risk for more and more of the cardiac issues. So um, this is pretty timely, and I appreciate the call, really. And yeah. this was unsolicited, yes, by the way. It. <laughs> it was unsolicited, this call, so thank you. Yes, and it you, was. That's and you didn't cry. In my uh, instincts, you know. Uh, God bless you, honey. God bless you. You didn't I cry, Jackie. You sound great. <laughs> thanks. Ah, thanks. thanks. He looks great, too. 855-839-1210 uh, is our number so, here. Thanks for the call, Jackie. Uh, that's an interesting call. Yeah. And we've, we've talked about that patient. I yes. know we've talked about yes. him, and, and that's another <clears throat> miracle story. Well, he, he really was pretty sick. But, you know, what's happening, John, is I've been seeing more and more post-COVID people, and they're coming in, and they, they see right afterwards, you start to see a big increase in their lipids. And then ultimately, maybe a month or so later, the lipids may come back to their pre-COVID value. But I started thinking about this again. The scientist in me is always thinking, and I started discussing it with my medical directors. And I said, you know, there is a test out there that we should be running on these people, not just on our true cardiac patients. And we started chatting about it, and they said, so give me, give me the reasons, Ma. And I said, simply because if those lipids go up in the moment, what is the underlying cause of the inflammation? Where is this inflammation and are there things we're missing? So the test that we've been running is something called the Cleveland Clinic Heart Test that actually has been around since, um, I guess, well before 2017. And I've used it in our clinic for our cardiac patients. But what has happened is they've managed to join forces with one of the major laboratories, which made the test much more more accessible. But the reason why I love this test, it goes, it's designed to go beyond conventional laboratory diagnosis to assess cardiac disease, such as the cholesterol panels. You know, the cholesterol panels, the metabolic panels, yes. which everybody runs, all right? But that doesn't identify all the risks for these patients. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that, that is interesting. And yeah. what yeah. happens is they, they don't go beyond the traditional uh, types of inflammation markers. But 
This test looks at additional inflammation markers and genetics and other markers to help us really identify the risk for the patients. And therefore, we are able to better assess what kind of treatment plan they may have to go on. And that may include putting patients we didn't normally put on the statins or the lipid uh, lowering drugs, at least for a short period of time. And of course, the lowest dose of that by utilizing what? Our, Our IV treatments to help in addition to work synergistically. So what's happening is these significant findings in the test menu, and it's really, the test menu is very convoluted for me to go into, but it's looking for obscure vascular risk markers so that we can identify the personalized care for a patient. So it's not enough anymore to just look at things like your LDL, your HDL, and maybe the smaller proteins, the VDL, right? We really want to look at some of the additional markers that may help increase your risk for developing the arterial sclerosis as well as some other vascular conditions. And why I say this, this came about because I have a patient who we've been working with since COVID who actually presented with the the congestive heart failure issues based on her echo and based on the clinical. And we sent her to a very well-known cardiologist. And of course, he was quick to put her on uh, the lipid lowering drugs. But When I ran the traditional markers, the inflammation markers, I saw that they were still up. So it wasn't enough to put her on the lipid-lowering drugs. We really had to attack some of the non-conventional inflammation markers that weren't always seen. And some, and, and, and incidentally, even the conventional one, like the C-reactive protein cardiac, that was normal. So you would think she was okay, but then we started to look at some of the hidden risks and we found out she needs a little more. So Dr. Molly said to me before the show, (laughs) "Yeah, I'm going to run this test on you this week. It's from the Cleveland Clinic. And she went on to explain this thing and, and it was just what you explained to the audience. Why are why are you running it on me? Because you had the cardio, you had the you had the uh, the cerebral incident, and that I believe is one of the reasons. It's some underlying inflammation. Again, look, folks, inflammation's the devil in yes. this case. Is no yes. matter what, and these viruses apparently are causing more inflammation than we know. Just in a quick snapshot. In other words, it wasn't enough to have your HDL good and. And your LDL lower, you still had some type of incident. Yes. Why? And I think that's what we're looking for. Either it's genetic or it could be as a result of some viral component, you know? And so, that's what I want to know. So this test yes. is really sort of looking for the needle in the haystack. It's looking, yeah, sort of. I guess you could put it that way. But, but it's. Because, uh, it, other tests don't. don't Show this. Right. It's looking for heightened levels of inflammation, heightened levels, different, different levels of inflammation that may heighten the risk of certain diseases, including heart disease. So if you didn't run this test, you wouldn't know certain things. Correct. 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 And it would look, and many times what I'm saying is generally, I would imagine more and more cardiologists are using this, but I don't want my patients to wait for their next visit to the cardiologist. I want to have the information in hand and get it over to your cardiologist so he or she can look at it. Because if you don't run this test, you may, you may not, not find know. It. Yeah, and it may not be something that's run routinely. And I'm fairly confident it's not being run routinely on post-COVID patients because we're so worried about some other issues. But my point is what we're doing at our facility, the in, innovative medicine is just what it says it is, the cooperative. And what we are doing is we're giving people who are enrolled in our protocols a level of concierge service that they don't get with their regular doc. And and you're proving it right here with with this. I mean, because because if you're you're not going to run this, 
you don't know. You, right. You and, it don't may, know. and it may be that everything comes back negative. That's fabulous. Still should go over to your cardiologist. As you know, I'm not against specialists. We have a whole list of them. That, and many of them don't agree with what we do, by the way. We look at a specialist at what he does or she does, and we say they're the best in the business for what you have. Is uh, post-COVID in, in this group of... Oh, yes. It, that's would, why I'm really... This is That's what motivated me to really look at expanding this offering. We've done it routinely for our cardiac patients, but I realized that there are so many post-COVID patients that tend to have these challenges that I want to jump right on it. Well, that makes sense. And uh, we're going to take a break here. It's the halftime point of the wow. show. It goes by fast. Wow. I told you. <laughs> Halfway point of the show. 855-839-1210 is the number here in the studio. 855-839-1210. It is Health Watch Sundays, 8 till 9, here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Dr. Molly Fantasia is the PhD doctor, the executive director, and the founder of Innovative Medical Associates. And I'm John DeMassey. We both return. More Health Watch after these words and we are back here on health watch operators are standing by right now at innovative medical associates 856-489-0505 that's the number 856-489-0505 you can call now you can call after nine o'clock you can call anytime and operators will be standing by to take your call and if you want to Make an appointment to sit down with Dr. Molly. That's really where you can get a lot of your information and, and you can get a lot of your questions answered. 856-489-0505 and the website, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com. InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com is the website. It's Health Watch Sundays 8 till 9 here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. 855-839-1210 is our number here. Eight five five eight three nine twelve ten. 839 This, uh, what you want to talk about now, is really related to an article that was out recently. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it, it tells the story of non-toxic intervention. And, yes, that's and, right. And it's, it's really <laughs> fascinating it's, because I, it, it all leads to vitamin C. Exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> it leads to vitamin C. And I don't, you know, John, I try to really keep it simple, right? Yeah. For me as yeah. well, for yeah. me, because sometimes it gets so complex, you start losing your mind w- with all the letters in it, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. yes. So the bottom line is there was an article out in June 2020 that actually was a study um, and it demonstrated how a non-toxic intervention of fasting, fasting plus a combination of vitamin C can potentially affect colorectal cancers and other KRAS mutation cancers. Now, people always come to me and say, what the heck is a KRAS? Well, that is a biomarker. It's a biomarker. It is a gene mutation. It is found in many uh, common uh, GI cancers, include most particularly colon cancer, colon rectal, and pancreatic cancer. So these particular biomarkers, and it's a very interesting thing because you know I run many tests that look at biomarkers in particular, not just for what we do, but in particularly because of my relationship with a wonderful guy out in Long Island who is a oncology guy who really understands how to utilize natural substances, and I like to think of him as a mentor to me, we really look at that and say what biomarkers are affected by certain natural substances. So it's something we do regularly. But in this case, finding this particular article and looking at a synergistic effect of utilizing fasting, and he believes in 14 hours, Dr. Molly can do roughly 12 and a half hours, and many of our patients are doing between 12 and 14 hours of fast. And again, I'm not the food police, so, you know, it's just something that we're seeing more and more, particularly for the colon rectal cancers, that if you fast, you have a better chance of uh, calming this cancer gene down. But what's interesting is you can have some better results of using this high dose vitamin C because it inhi- it in- it exhibits an anti-cancer effect through the pro 
antioxidant effect of vitamin C. Now, you've heard me say that's the beauty of vitamin C, right? It has yes. an antioxidant effect or a pro-oxidant effect. Well, the pro-oxidant effect is what works in this case. That's why many times I am not afraid to tell a patient, please go get your chemotherapy and come over and see us for a high dose of a particular form of vitamin C that actually is pro-oxidant, which means it produces hydrogen peroxide with an iron catalyst. It sounds fancy, but what it does is it produces a certain amount of uh, radicals. And these free radicals really are called reactive, and they can cause the cell damage and the cell death, meaning the cancer cell death. So there's a beauty in vitamin C because it works as an antioxidant sometimes and as a pro-oxidant. And for our cancer patients, we're looking at the pro-oxidant effect. Did I hear, or, or is it implied, that... You, you do this procedure or you fast and yeah. you're, you're going to maybe not get it or you're going to prevent it or it's no, going to be less. It, of, what, what we're saying is this may prolong your quality of life. That's okay? what I would. And in some cases they're saying it can be an effective, it can be an effective treatment uh, for vitamin C using the chemotherapy to help a patient have a better quality of life through the chemotherapy and hopefully, quote unquote, arrest the cancer and make a patient cancer free. I believe that really, even conventionally, they're not curing cancer. But if we can make a patient get through their combination treatment, or in some cases, do it alone. Now, you know, I've had patients who've done vitamin C therapy alone as a standalone therapy. And again, I'm not judgmental. We want to meet a patient where they are, but I am not against conventional treatment. You tell them, I tell people all the time, don't throw away your, your medication, right? Yes. Why would I say don't do a cancer treatment? But I am telling you that there are things out there, natural things that can actually help and they may have an anti-cancer potential as well. So you would do both. Yes, you, you would do for this some and patients, then you would do sure, sure. Regular for some, chemo. For some patients, that's exactly right, and we've had a ton of those, as you know, that, that have come in, and we've done both. So it really depends. That's why it's so important to run some of these specialized tests that we do, and believe it or not, we send them many times over to their oncologists. Sometimes the oncologists don't appreciate them, meaning looking for these biomarkers, these liquid biopsies, because... These biomarkers, like this K, KRAS, is shown in these liquid biopsies, and that's found in tissue. It can be found in the tumor. It can be found in the blood. And what it does is it can tell us that how it's regulating gene growth, uh, the gene, the cell growth, the mutation, and it can be used as a way to mark whether a patient is doing well through a treatment. So, yeah, I mean, there's science has done so much to help move medicine that every day I'm more excited by more and more of these kinds of things. Back to my original question. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Does vitamin C help in just about everything? I mean, ah, there he <laughs> I mean, is. The, that, that's, that's you. Okay. <laughs> vitamin C is wonderful. And we know that vitamin C has been used for years fighting colds, right? Yes. We see that it may yes. lessen the cold. I think more and more of that is coming out. And we know that vitamin C, as it turns out, that it can really improve many other things as well. There's a lot of good things that come from vitamin C. And believe it or not, John, we're finding today that there are more low levels of vitamin C than you know, and it's not just in scurvy. And that's what my next point was, yeah, that, okay. that you have been, been telling me that vitamin C deficiency is happening in a lot of people. Right now. And they're still in need of vitamin C. That's right. There are lower levels of vitamin C being shown. And the thing is, people think that vitamin C is, oh, well, you're just going to urinate it out and that's that. Well, you know, um, that may be true. But I can tell you that there are a lot of folks out there that can't ingest enough vitamin C because of their digestive issues. And what happens is 
people, and I hear this all the time, they call me, scurvy's dead, Dr. Molly, scurvy's dead. That was for <laughs> sailors a long time yeah. ago when Columbus was trying to find America, yeah. which we found out he didn't do, yeah. and, and all of the That's variations, right, with everything, right? But the point is, no, it's not true. Even in modern days today, we're finding that people are not getting enough of natural source of vitamin C. And by the way, my sources of vitamin C are natural sources. They're expensive to make, but we can do it. What is it? Is the source of your vitamin C? Many it? times it's tapioca. Sometimes it's beets. Sometimes it's cassava. It depends. But I try very hard not to use manufactured vitamin C. That's because Dr. Molly, ha- as a believer, believes that God has programmed the body to really react to the natural source vitamin C as opposed to the manufactured. Vitamin C can help in a variety of conditions. Yes. And... I may have gotten a stroke, and I may have gotten other things, but I don't get colds. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, okay. Listen, thank God for one thing. I mean, uh, I don't get that. No, but you know what? There there are times when people don't realize how deficient they are in vitamin C, and maybe we do a disservice because we, we meaning the traditionalists, we look at the vitamin C levels and we've arbitrarily decided these are the right levels and this is how much vitamin C is the daily requirement and blah, blah, blah. But we forget that we are one of the few species in the world that can't make vitamin C. Human beings don't make their own vitamin C. We have to get it from the outside. Is there such a thing as too much vitamin C? Well... Yeah, I guess you could have too much, but I got to tell you, I've never seen it. In 26 years, I've never seen it. I've never had it. And if you subscribe to the thought that you're going to get rid of, by urination, the excess vitamin C, chances are you're never going to have too much. And you still need a therapeutic level to do the things that vitamin C does. But vitamin C has many actions in the body, and some are fun. So we should talk about those as well. So if somebody is listening to this program and they're saying, well, I I think I have enough vitamin C, you probably don't. Right. 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 So it would behoove you to come in and talk. At least find out. And if you're feeling well and you want to get this at a spa, okay. But you're not going to get a natural source vitamin C. And here's the thing the reason why I wanted to talk about vitamin C today is because people who are deficient in vitamin C have an increase in C reactive protein, which means what? The inflammation marker, which means. They could be having inflammation on a subclinical level, and that could be dangerous. And you've often talked about inflammation. That's and right. How difficult it is to deal with. Exactly. And so here we go again. Right. It's the circle. There we are again. And vitamin C plays a particular role. And that's why in a lot of our protocols, we use vitamin C. Now, we don't use them in all of them because sometimes we can't. People who may have hemochromatosis, we may not use so much vitamin C. But We definitely use it in a lot of other areas. And we really should look that vitamin C deficiency is prevalent just about in every chronic condition that we've observed in our particular clinic. It's a small group, granted, but we find that the inflammation markers are always elevated in those patients and they always have a decrease in vitamin C. And you do have a lot of patients coming in to see you and... They're, they're getting vitamin C. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> we are uh, coming up on our final break of the morning here on Health Watch, which means that you still have time to call in with a question or a comment, 855-839-1210, 855-839-1210. The show is Health Watch every Sunday, 8 till 9, right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. 855-839-1210 is our number again here in the studio. Uh, like I said, time for uh, one or two more calls here on the show. Dr. Molly and I return with more of today's Health Watch after these words. 856-489-0505 is the number you call for Innovative Medical Associates. In fact, you can call right now. 856-489-0505. Make that appointment to sit down with Dr. Molly and go over your situation in its entirety, and she'll, uh, she'll be able to help you out. I, I pretty much can tell you that. 
856-489-0505. The website, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com. InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com is the website. Check that out as well. A lot of good information on that on the website, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com. And don't forget, we have our Health Watch replay this afternoon from 4 until 5 right here on Talk Radio 1210. If you miss any of today's show or you want to hear it again, hey, whatever, 4 till 5 this afternoon here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. It is the live version of Health Watch right now at six oh eight five six eight five five eight three nine twelve ten 839 1210 is the number. Linda is in Medford Lakes. Linda, good morning. You're on Health Watch with Dr. Molly. Hi, Linda. Hi, Dr. Molly. I love your show. Thank you so much. You impart so much information to us. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're too generous. You're welcome. You're welcome. And um, a friend of ours, uh, he lives in Philadelphia, and he has been just recently diagnosed with throat cancer. Oh. Um, he's, I think he's about 60. Um, he is um, taking, having radiation treatments, I yes. think about three times a, a week. Right. So right. anyway, that's what I was calling about. Well, well, listen, I'm going to tell you something. This reminds me, I'm treating a case right now. Now the the person I'm treating is a little younger than your friend, um, and he's he has uh, throat cancer, and he just wrapped up his, uh, I think he's on his last round of the radiation. And I can tell you that he's been doing pretty well. And in fact, his um, oncologist was quite surprised. The interventional radiologist said, you're really doing very well. One of the things I would talk to your friend about is there's a couple of nutraceuticals that can help him get through this radiation i'm sure it's been knocking the heck out of him am i right yeah 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 Yeah. Uh, but there are and in this case um what we would want to do is i don't of course want to interfere with any of the free radicals that they are creating but i think we would want to look at the pro-oxidant effect of some vitamin c and again he can't swallow any of the nutraceuticals so it's a little bit more difficult he really needs to look for iv um IV nutraceuticals that can help him get through this. Also, there are some amino acids that might help him. And by the way, there is an interesting study that says people who have throat cancer generally test positive for certain viruses. And we are Mm -hmm. able to deliver certain nutraceuticals that have effectively helped reduce the viral loads. And that's something that traditionalists don't necessarily tell the patient about. But it would be something I would love to chat with him about because it's a very important piece to this. And I can tell you that we've treated probably somewhere around 100 or so patients who've had a form of throat cancer, and just about 90% of them had some viruses in that in that mix. So again, it, you know, I subscribe to the thought that viruses are a component of some of these cancers, absolutely. So please have well, them call the office. I you're, definitely you're, will. you're a very good friend. You're a very good friend. <laughs> That's, Thank you very God much. Bless I'll you. definitely have him call you. God bless Thank you. you. Thank you. So Thank much. you. Thanks for the call. That's a Linda. great call. And you know, you know the I, gentleman I'm yeah, talking about. He's a wonderful guy because he brings in another patient of mine who has breast cancer, yes. right? But um, yeah, there are there's a viral component to this, and we know vitamin C works with that. But I also have particular nutraceuticals like lysine that can work in that area. So it would be an interesting case. In general you are able to reduce the side effects of chemo and radiation yes, yes. with your protocol. Sure, sure. And that's all I'll talk about yes. is how we can do that. Yes. But again, people then, you know, once your chemo's done, once your, <laughs> once your radiation is over and quote unquote, you're cancer free, is that how they're putting it or your cancer, whatever. Bottom line is you still have to live your life. Yes. Well, how are you going to do that yeah. if you don't get enough nutrition? Yeah. If you're not, you, you know, in our our facility, that's why when you ask me, how many how many treatments does it take? I don't know, John, but I have many people who come back after their treatments and follow a certain protocol. They don't have to go steady with me every week, but they're there at least once or twice a month. I think he will need the three times a week well, radiation. Well, he, yeah, wow. he's, that's, yeah that's, he, he probably needs once a week. But, yeah. but the point is, I think we can help him and not just... Uh, you know, we want to improve his quality of life, but I want him to be able to enjoy life again. 
Talk about Sandy. Your oh, patient. yes, Sandy. If you remember a few weeks ago, we delivered iron to her by hydration. Well, one of the other benefits of vitamin C is that alongside with iron, it really helps you um, uptake the iron and improve your iron levels after the infusion. And I can show that actually by an H and H that we keep running on her week to week. And we found that indeed her hemoglobin is holding steady. Can you show data for just sure. about everything? That, yeah, that I you sure certainly talk I about? can. Certainly I can. The question is I have to have permission from the patients yes. to do it. But I'm gonna tell you, you can get the data by sitting in my clinic and talking to the particular patient says, Molly, come on over here, tell them about my last blood work. Tell them about the you know that, John. I've done that many times. Yeah, I know I've you have. Come on, come on, come <laughs> over, we'll show you. If John says it's okay to show his <laughs> blood work, I'm gonna show it. Yeah. And the bottom line is listen, I want want people to understand God has given us a full range of wonderful nutraceuticals and natural products that can really help us in improving our quality of life on this side of the earth. So believe me, look to it. Yeah, and, and I'm a living proof of that. I know. Well, John, you got the fountain of youth. I don't know. I think using the skincare products and all. By the way, you know vitamin C is great for younger looking skin, yeah, right? Not I, just I collagen because that. it improves some of the collagen. And vitamin C can help in so many ways. You know, John, you are the guy who said, you know, you don't get a cold, this and that. You know, how about looking at the benefits of vitamin C in everything we do? Yeah. Well, your esthetician told me, look, I'm, I'm going to make you look younger. So, I'm, hey, I'm in. Yeah, well, you look pretty darn good considering what you've been through. Yeah. So the bottom line is look at the synergistic effects of not just vitamin C, but many of the other natural substances out there. And it, it, it behooves you again, as I said, to call Dr. Molly. For whatever the reason happens to be, uh, you just want to feel better, uh, etc. Then call her, and uh, the, the initial consultation is it's absolutely free. yes, and it's about twenty minutes yes. more or less, usually more. Yeah, the the, the the next one is twenty minutes. It will be the first one. <laughs> You're too good to me, John. And with that, we put the wraps on another another edition of Health Watch. Don't forget, operators are standing by at Innovative Medical Associates eight five six. Four eight nine zero five zero five eight five six four eight nine zero five zero five. Innovative Medical Associates dot com is the website. Innovative Medical Associates dot com. And don't forget our Health Watch replay four until five this afternoon here on Talk Radio twelve ten WPHT. For Dr. Molly Fantasia and everyone at Innovative Medical Associates, the lovely Linda and our nursing staff, Barbara, Catherine, and Lana. And of course, there's Delightful D, Fabulous Fran, Joanne, and our medical assistant, Karen and Kathy. Thanks for listening. We will talk to you next week. Health Watch, right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. You take care. is paid for by Innovative Medical Associates. All opinions or statements expressed on the program are solely those of Innovative Medical Associates or their guests and do not reflect the opinions of WPHT or Odyssey.